Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another episode of Rad TV. I'm your host, Grant Taylor, uh, stepping in for Tom Proctor. He'll be back next month. Um, for those of you that haven't seen the show before, Rad TV stands for Rights and Democracy Television, and we do this show once a month on the fourth Friday to update you on things that Rights and Democracy is currently promoting and different campaigns that they're working on throughout uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, so Rights and Democracy is a grassroots people-powered organization committed to creating an independent political movement for long-lasting fundamental changes in both Vermont and New Hampshire and, and far beyond, eventually, someday. <laughs> um, so tonight's show is called uh, Change from the Ground Up. And that's in celebration of all the grassroots power that uh, RAD's built up over the past couple of years and uh, an ode to where we are headed next. Uh, we're talking about one of RAD's most powerful tools tonight, movement politics. Um, and that's going to touch on a couple of different subjects that um, happened in the last month, things that are going on. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the most recent, um, this past weekend was RAD's Membership Assembly and People Power Summit. And then uh, we're going to talk about uh, RAD chapter building that's going on in New Hampshire and in Vermont, um, basically all over both states, I think. And, um, and then we're also going to um, announce who Rights and Democracy has endorsed for president and who we're going to be putting our power behind over the next year to uh, see them take the place of the current president. Um, so to help us unpack all of this is uh, three fantastic guests that have uh, been working with RAD for um, different amounts of time and uh, in different positions. Uh, first to my right, uh, we have a regional organizer for RAD Vermont. Uh, that's Betsy McGavis. Hi. Welcome. Hi, thanks so much. Welcome great to the show to, great again. Great to be here. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Um, and then next down is a potential state representative from Essex, uh, Tanya Vihovsky. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Nice. His first time on the show, yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, cool. This will hopefully be first of many. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And then also Skyping in from uh, New Hampshire is uh, organizing Director for Rights and Democracy in New Hampshire, Mr. Isaac Grimm. Hi, Isaac. All right. Well, we're not hearing you in here, but... Oh, sorry about that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Isaac. there he is. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Sorry about the audio issue there. And uh, greetings from the seacoast of New Hampshire. Happy to be on. Very cool. All right. Cool, cool. Well, we're glad to have you here. Help us uh, get through all these topics because there's so much to talk about. Um, so I wanted to give you just both, uh, all of you, just a quick chance to say um, how long you've been working with RAD and um, your favorite part about rights and democracy. All right. Oh, I'll, I'll kick us off. So I started... I think I like first started to realize that RAD was around maybe two years ago when I was doing um, some electoral organizing in Burlington on, on local city council races, um, working for can with candidates who were endorsed by RAD, and I was like, okay, you know, this is great. These people are uh, endorsing the people that I support. And then last fall, I helped out on a state rep campaign to try and um, win a veto-proof majority in the state house, and we overturned a, a long-term incumbent Republican uh, in Burlington and so I did a lot of door knocking for that, did a lot of uh, literature dropping and then that was just as a volunteer and then I came on in October, or August, I came on late August as our Chittenden County and Addison, eventually Addison County Regional Organizer and I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And awesome. the other question was my favorite part about favorite RAD. Favorite thing about RAD. That's hard. Um, I, I, think, I think it's definitely the people the people, other people that, you know, that work with us, like, you're both, like, employed by RAD, but also the people that um, are, are volunteers and our leaders are amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 So I um, first knew that I was working with RAD um, <laughs> when I, I ran for um, state rep in Essex in 2016 and was a, an endorsed candidate and started to really work um, with RAD and build that power. But I actually realized down um, after the fact that I'd actually been involved in other ways on various RAD campaigns <laughs> prior to that. I just didn't realize it. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's kind of a challenging question. But I knew that I was doing it. And James Haslam, who is the director, actually lives in my district. And so we've connected a lot. Um, 
before I decided to run and then once I decided to run on that and then also building some of this movement. Um, and my favorite part about it, like Betsy, is, is the, it's the people and it's really bringing those people together, the organizing capacity that we have when we really come together in that energy and what we can really mm -hmm. get done in a way that, I mean, it's why I ran for office because I felt like we needed more activists in seats and like it just the way that RAD takes activism and leverages it into places of power is just really important for me and that's, I think, my favorite part. Awesome. And uh, Isaac, uh, how about you? How long have you been working with Rad? And what's your favorite thing about the job? Yeah, I was the, I was actually the first hired staffer uh, in 2015, four years ago, and I started as a Canvas director. Um, so my, my kind of introduction to Rad was helping build it and uh, knock thousands of doors all over the state of Vermont, which was an amazing experience. Um, and I've since kind of been in a bunch of different staff roles with the organization. And uh, I came over here to New Hampshire last March to take on the role of organizing director. And it's been a huge learning experience um, and really amazing. And I would say the, the thing that to me is the most important and the most fulfilling and the most grounding is, um, is connecting with people and working with our members. You know, um, Going from someone where I've just knocked on their door and don't know them and just ask them about what issues matter to them and what they're going through to you know, uh, a couple months later, they're stepping up in ways that they never thought possible um, and lifting up their voice and realizing their power and their agency. That to me is what this is all about. Um, so many people are disenfranchised or left to feel like they're struggling alone or that there's nothing they can do about it. And so um, this organization and this movement is all about making you know those people who should be uh, the, at the very center of the fights that, that we're engaged in. Um, you know, making sure that they can be brought into the process. So it's a privilege to just, you know, be able to actually do this um, and wake up every morning thinking about how we can get more people engaged and build the kind of people power we need so that our government is not just, you know, uh, directed by big money, but is actually directed by people's needs. <laughs> Love it. So that sounds awesome. Um, it seems like there's a pretty general... Um, love and appreciation for the people connections that get made here. Um, so that's just like fantastic. It's definitely one of my favorite parts. I've been volunteering with RAD for like a long time now and <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to welcome the audience to give us a call at any time during the show if you want to speak with us live at 802-862-3966. That's 802-862. 8623966. Um, so first we're going to get into a discussion about RAD's Membership Assembly and People Power Summit. Uh, this is a, a yearly event, I believe, that happens. And um, um, Isaac, I'd like to have you kind of start us off talking about it, I think, because you've, uh, you've, probably, you've been to all of them for the past couple of years. And I wanted to see what you thought about this one in comparison. And Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. I mean, we had you know almost 200 people come from all over this, all over uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, some folks drove, you know, uh, upwards of you know, over two hours to get there. Uh, we had folks like staying the night beforehand, um, and it was just a really powerful day. It was a you know, the, it's the chance that we get every year for our members to gather to make important decisions about like who's going to be on our board for the coming year. Um, about any changes that we make to, you know, the laws that we, like our bylaws, like what kind of standards we hold ourselves up to as an organization. Um, and we had two sets of workshops. We had workshops on collect collective liberation and the way it is that like all the intersecting isms um, matter and are oppressing people and how we can address that and deal with it um, and how we can organize around that as primarily white states um, to fight against racism and sexism and all these things. Um, there was trainings on like how to use tech tools and like technology and, our, and to make our organizing more powerful there was like um trainings on how to just stay sane in this movement <laughs> right? and take care of ourselves and uh, make sure that we're staying healthy and that we're taking care of our mental health um so that we're not burning ourselves out because i know so many people care so much and have a hard time sometimes finding that balance you know so there's a lot of amazing workshops um we had nina turner there who was just incredible and is an amazing speaker and is so inspiring uh, we had some of our legislative leaders there to give a, you know, to kind of talk about the lessons that they could 
in part as people who have gone from being activists to being legislators and being champions in the state houses. So we had Tim Smith there, who's a, a state representative from Manchester. We had Kaya Morris, who's a former state representative from Bennington and is just an amazing leader. Uh, and Becca Ballant, the Senate Majority Lead, who is also just an incredible person. Um, Dave Zuckerman came through and spoke. Um, we had video from Ayanna Presley, who was supposed to come and unfortunately had a constituent pass away, and so she had to be at their service, um, but spoke about uh, some really amazing criminal justice reform that she is put, putting out in a bill of her own. Um, yeah, and it was just like a great opportunity for folks to connect and build relationships across both states, um, for people to meet that are in our different regions, help them build with our chapters to meet and build those relationships and talk about what they're going through and help like, you know, harvest lessons together. Um, and the space was beautiful. It was the School for International Training in Brattleboro, and it was just this gorgeous location. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a really amazing day overall. I was really happy to be a part of it and it felt a lot like our prior membership. So right it's always just a really good... A uh, chance for us to get together, to recharge, um, and to like build for the coming year because the coming year is it's pretty damn important. I would say. <laughs> very, very important. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's fantastic. So, uh, two hundred people, and uh, and so Betsy and Tanya, you guys were both there. Yep. Yeah. What you What you guys think about it? I mean, that's the first membership assembly I have gone to. Um, the last one was right after my campaign and I was resting, sleeping, um, recovering. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just really amazing. It was amazing to connect with people. I was really excited. Um, we've been really trying to mobilize lots of different communities. And one of the things that was really exciting for me, um, from Essex, it's close to a three-hour drive. And including James and myself, there were eight people from Essex that got up on a 11-degree Saturday morning and drove three hours to connect and build this movement together and so that was really exciting That's to see awesome. those people that were that committed to come that far from my community that I've been connecting with and really trying to build that with was just absolutely exciting I mean Nina is always always a highlight always anywhere a she is, is. Right she's the reason to go she's yeah. amazing I mean I'm, I definitely used the fact that she was going to be there a little bit to draw some of those eight <laughs> people out yeah. um, so Nina was definitely fantastic and just having that sense for me like coming together and having that shared vision is, is where I draw some of my energy to keep fighting. You know, it was, it's events like that, like physically they tire me out, but they fuel me f to continue emotionally because it is really hard to, to keep going when it seems like every day we wake up and something else terrible has happened or there's something mm -hmm. else to fight against. So it's helpful to come together and remember that we're not in it alone. We've got a group oh. of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I have to like echo kind of the same things of like listening to the different speakers like like Nina, but also like Kaya, Kaya Morris and Becca Ballant, like other people that have gone through this and have been in this fight for a long time and to hear their stories and how they stay motivated. So I felt like it was both a, a, a tiring day and that it was a long drive in the morning, <laughs> a long drive back home. But it was both. Uh, it was also a really, really energizing day. And the drives were really fun. It was like we have this new Burlington chapter that's getting going and we had a, a full carload of members. And so on the way down, we kind of got to know each other. And on the way back, we were scheming of how we're going to bring this all of this back to Burlington and how we're going to keep building people power and make and make change here. So it was great. It's, uh, it's almost like team building, like a ropes course or yeah. something. You yeah. Know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Here, here, you guys ride six hours and try <laughs> yeah, together right, and see, right. you know, see how you guys do. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, so you, you mentioned the, uh, the chapter, the, mm. uh, the Burlington mm -hmm. chapter, and then that helped get the people together to go join you down there. And I know that kind of Rad, Rad's trying to build chapters all over, right, Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, so... Uh, we'd love to have you, you know, elaborate a little bit more on Burlington's chapter, yeah. and then uh, and then Tanya, you can talk all about Essex, and and then Isaac, you can uh, let us know what's going on in New Hampshire, hopefully. Um, yeah. So yeah. Totally. Right, so and so, yeah. um, rights to democracy is kind of moving towards more of like a chapter model of of having, um, because we have two pretty rural states, and Burlington is is the least, you know, Chittenden County is the least rural of the, of those, but. Um, like in general having regional chapters where people in rural places can come together and talk about how we can can make change in our communities and making sure that those chapters are, are sustainable and are like going to be around and aren't just like you know a group that's coming in and and having a rally and then never showing up again like that's not that's not going to make any long lasting change that's not going to build the relationships we need so um having sustainable chapters having you know real community input in things and and making it meaningful and so um 
we have chapters kind of across across Vermont. Bennington has been our longest kicking chapter, um, and we have a Rutland organizer, Liz, uh, who is incredible, and she's doing great work uh, in central and southern Vermont, and then I'm up here uh, in, in Chittenden County, and so Tanya and I have been both working on uh, the Burlington and, and Essex uh, chapters. In Burlington, we had our first meeting last week, and it was maybe last week, two weeks ago, um, and it was great. There were a lot of folks there really excited to, to talk about um, how, how we organize on a statewide level and how we push our state legislators, but also what can we do in Burlington? There's so much going on in Burlington and there's so much room um, for, for more people to be involved in that process and uh, folks are really, really excited about that. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the really exciting things for me, I, I went to high school in Essex, so I've, I've got some long-standing familiarity with that community, both as a young person and a slightly less young person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but one of the things that I got really excited about is, and I know happens in Essex a lot, is we sort of feel like everything happens in Burlington and we're just out there doing our own thing. Mm. And it's been really exciting to have something happening in Essex. It's the second largest municipality in Vermont and there's like nothing happening there. And so it's really exciting to be jumping in and organizing people in Essex and really hearing how much they really do want to be involved. I think when I launched my 2016 campaign, nobody thought a progressive could win in Essex because it's viewed as this sort of like out there place. But what I realized is that there's all these people that just don't know where to tap in and connect. And so getting to build the chapter in Essex has been really fun. We've done some really great stuff. We had our first um, chapter meeting back in October. Um, and shortly thereafter, we did a healthcare panel where we screened the president interviews with the presidential candidates on healthcare. And we had a panel of activists and legislators conversing with the community about what we're doing in Vermont and what we do at the national level and how to engage. And I think one of the, the most important things that came out of that is everyone's like, well, how do we get this information? Like, why don't we already know this stuff? <laughs> and so just really seeing that build, we have another meeting coming up on the 7th where we're gonna do some legislative advocacy training and, and mm. get people comfortable telling their story so that we can mobilize a group to go down and push for bold, change and not just easy to pass change yeah yeah fantastic that's essex so new hampshire i imagine folks watching this are likely not people from new hampshire so just to give a little context um, <laughs> Uh, there's some similarities. We have uh, Democratic majorities uh, just as of last year. Before then, it was all Republican-dominated. Um, but we still have a Republican <laughs> governor, Chris Sununu, um, who I would say is uh, worse than Phil Scott uh, in that he has like, visited Trump more than any other governor in the entire country, um, absolutely sucks up to Trump, um, has vetoed everything decent and holy <laughs> like he, mm -hmm. he you know, 57 bills this year wow. stopped in, in you know stopping bills in their tracks like trying to raise the minimum wage even to 12 dollars an hour he vetoed paid family medical leave he wow. vetoed a number of uh, renewable energy bills that were nothing close to even looking like the green Ooh. new deal but that were at least you know okay steps forward <laughs> so you know, what we're up against in new hampshire is um is very real uh, we were able to get majorities, but there is there are some serious roadblocks to us um, making change, and also like it's it's very much contested here um, in terms of the power of like the kind of conservative movement and the progressive movement. Um, Donald Trump uh, lost in New Hampshire in 2016, but only by 2,700 votes, and that's out of you know a state of a million and. 1.2 million people. So um, there's a lot of strength of those kind of right-wing ideas, uh, the anti-immigrant scapegoating of, you know, blaming poor people and, and mm. thinking that the government is the root of all of our problems. So there's a lot of work we have to do in building solidarity of people in our communities. There's a lot of work that we have to do to get those folks who actually agree with us on values but are surrounded by mm. this kind of media hype and this ideology of live free or die. So a lot of what we're doing is just, is building from the ground up, building those relationships and building these local chapters. So we have chapters right now in Manchester and Nashua, which are the two largest cities in the state. Um, there's some amazing folks leading on work in those cities around housing, around yeah. healthcare, around public education. Um, we have recently brought on an organizer in Sullivan County, which is one of the more re um, uh, rural counties in the state, and that's kind of in the in the western part of New Hampshire, very close to like White River Junction and south of there, kind of below the Upper Valley. Um, we've had 
longest standing and strongest chapter is the Monadnock Progressive Alliance, which is kind of centered in Keene, but is the larger Monadnock region. And they have ju- they just do incredible work. They're pulling off their own forums and rallies, and they endorsed a uh, candidate running for, for mayor, who unfortunately was uh, narrowly defeated um, by a young, sort of um, charming uh, tr- young Trump. Uh, not, not really a young Trump, like a young Sununu. Charming, um, a charming Trump. I would say he's like a Trump. He's a he's <laughs> together coherent sentences. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> bar solo. <laughs> and, and then we have another yeah. uh, another chapter emerging in the lakes region. So there's you know there's folks who are kind of building around the issues that matter to them uh, in these local areas. Um, we've thrown down some of the local elections. We endorsed Joyce Craig, who was running for re-election in Manchester um, against Victoria Sullivan, who's a hardline right wing Republican, cool. um, and she won by fifty seven percent. So that was fantastic. Um, and one thing that I would just highlight that really kind of stuck out as an amazing story was um, one a, about a week after we brought on our new Sullivan County organizer. Uh, her name is Allie Brokenshire. Uh, the Republican committee in that county was planning on doing a fundraiser, and they were invited Robert Spencer, who's a well-known, notorious anti-Muslim uh, Islamophobe. Mm. He's literally banned from the U.K. right now, um, and he is just, uh, you know, admits to just being an anti-Muslim racist. And uh, so Ali immediately connected with a lot of other community members who were concerned about this. There was a Muslim family who lived nearby who was really scared about this. Um, they organized a protest. They drove tons of calls to the, the, facil- the, uh, the venue that was going to do this. They got it canceled. And then the Republican committee tried to go do it at another place uh, in, in Claremont. <laughs> They did the same thing. They organized a protest. They drew a cause. They got that event canceled. Um, and then through all of this, the chair of the Republican committee in Sullivan County, who was also like this right-wing shock jock radio host, um, got kicked off his show. His show got canceled and also got kicked off the Republican committee um, because he was just throwing out these vitriolic um, you know, a- attacks and just swearing at people and saying all these terrible things. And just through this organizing and through connecting with people in the community – you know, we shut down these events that were just highlighting hate and making, you know, people of, of that are have every right to be concerned uh, really uncomfortable. And uh, and also just it was an opportunity for people to, like, see what can be accomplished together when we actually stand together, when we organize quickly. So that was just nice. something that happened recently that so, um, really showed to me the power of organizing locally that I wanted to lift up. And it was yeah. really a success. We're going, to, uh, we're going to ask you to <clears throat> make sure you share the episode once we get it um, recorded and, and live for everybody to watch a recorded version and share it in New Hampshire there. Because um, we, want to, we want to inspire people, not just in New Hampshire, but you know, if you're able to see this from the Northeast Kingdom or somewhere else, you know that you can um, organize with some people in your area to create some real change for, for yourselves and for your community members. Um, so we just have about two minutes left. And um, I wanted to make sure that we announced that Rights and Democracy uh, voted, had a member vote to endorse Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders, for president. And we're going to be putting our yeah. energy around that. Um, I was quite happy to hear that. But um, also, I was wondering, um, Isaac or um, Betsy, do you guys know how many people voted in that, in that vote? Uh, almost half of our membership and it was hundreds of people I can't remember the all right yeah I can't remember I'm on the leadership committee with Rad and so I was part of that process as well and I can't remember the exact number but I do know that we were really pleased with with the turnout I think it was close to 47 or 48 percent of our our membership like it was a good percentage that's good that's good so we like to see that participation you know amongst our members 63 percent voted to endorse Bernie out of everyone who voted so it was great Yeah. yeah Cool. Through a ranked choice voting system. Through ranked choice. That sounds good. Um, well, we'll probably get about a minute left. And um, we just wanted to talk about um, just some stuff that's coming up. Um, that's yeah, I can, I can talk about a few things. Cool. Um, we got some chapter meetings coming up in Bennington on November 27th, Rutland on December 5th, Essex on December 7th, uh, and in Burlington December 11th. And we also have our uh, Human Rights Award celebration, which is going to be, I think it's going to be in Montpelier at uh, Bar Hill Distillery, and that's going to be on December 10th. So it's going to be going to be a great day celebrating some local leaders who are who are doing uh, really good work in this community. 
Awesome. And then our next uh, episode of Rad TV is going to be uh. de December 27th, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we will hopefully record a show and we'll have them play it on December 27th, uh, you know, because I don't think anybody's going to be working there. <laughs> but uh, have a great holidays, everybody. Um, um, Thanksgiving and all that, and peace. <laughs> Thanks, all. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Isaac. Thanks, Grant.